Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. So first thing we're going to watch is Morph's take on it. The thumbnail is hilarious. The <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll even just show it to you. Why not? 25,000 for early access. He's got the gold armor on and everything. Perfect. And the title is Star Citizen Players Furious After Early Access Changes. Ooh, we were almost muted. There we go. Star Citizen's developers just changed who can access the test environment and when, and the community is absolutely on fire. A glance at their own homebrewed forums they call Spectrum will reveal nearly every single section is filled top to bottom with people complaining about this change. As I would love, oh dude, I should do this, is spend a little bit of time looking at the people who posted in, commented in, and made the original post and see what their other comments are on Spectrum. Like if they've ever made the, if you don't like it, leave, uh, it's an alpha, you're just testing, right? Like all of these comments and then they're mad because they know they're not going to get in wave one because they never test. Oh. Especially the there's concierge a few. forums whose members are particularly aggrieved. As the first wave release has gone from a concierge $1,000 level to a concierge $25,000 level. Or you could just subscribe for $10 a month and get access. But more on that later, this isn't exactly what it seems. Still, no. the reactions are interesting. I'll show you some of what the community is saying in a moment, but first, let's talk about what happened. So if you don't know, Chris Wayne from CIG posted in the announcement section of the Spectrum forums yesterday how they were going to be restructuring. Bro, poor Chris. Chris is like the sweetest guy in the world, and they made him do this. Structuring <laughs> the they P2 knew, probably. wave releases. The P2, if you don't know, is the public test universe for Star Citizen. This is a version of the game they release prior to what they call live, which is also technically a test environment, but that's beside the point. So they're going to be changing it from the original four-wave structure to a new six-wave structure. The original structure worked like this. It would first be released to Evo Kadi Flight Group, which is yep. a small group of hand-selected players who uh, signed putting, an NDA. He's putting everything They're typically on the side here. very good testers who've played the game for a long time and have shown good constructive feedback. Then it would move on to Wave 1, which is a larger group of active players by hours and people who also give good feedback, in addition to members of the subscriber community who pay 10 to 20 bucks a month and members of the concierge community who are people who have spent over a thousand US dollars on the game. Then okay, and the key here, again, which is I think the most important thing, is that there is no mention of active players. So how you get into Evocati was originally, at least, I don't know what the qualifications are now, but I was in the original Evocati test flight, which was you had to make a number of uh, issue council reports. You had to contribute to issue council reports. You had to play the game for X amount of hours. You know, who knows what their qualifications were, but it was player exclusive and benefiting the testing of the game. That's how you got into Evocati. Okay. That was the original. And there is no mention of that for wave one, right? So I can remember, uh, and I think I mentioned this in my original reaction to all this stuff, was a, a huge member of our community, Dade Vinci. Everybody here knows Dade. Dade plays the game as much, played, I should say, the game as much as anybody uh, for years and would specifically do all these things. And after the initial Evo Cotty wave, never got an invite, okay? Never got an invite and could not get into wave one because he didn't qualify for any of these things. Yet, wave one is where he was needed the most. So keep that in mind, all right? Moves on to wave two, which is a smaller group of people who are also good testers. Right, so that should be here, you would think, right? But no, pay to wave one, play to wave two, makes no sense. And then to wave three, which is just called Open PTU. Basically, at that point, anybody who owns the game can play the test environment. The new wave structure will begin like it did before with Evocani. Now, hold on. I'm going to go back 
to the original, to this thing. Wave 3, while yes, being all backers, is also all backers. And how many of all backers are AFK, not paying attention, quit, don't care, not gonna, still waiting for live, right? So there's never that, boom, hammer the server, kill it, and get the data they need before pushing to live, right? So that's a huge problem as well. So we really have to look at what CIG was doing and why they were doing it, and you can crap on them for some of the money the stuff. Test environment. But everything the new else... wave structure will begin like it did before with Evo Kani, but the big difference is going to be the next five waves. The first one being now only Legatus Navium Concierge level backers who are concierge backers who have paid over 25,000 US dollars. That and subscribers who pay at least $10 a month and top active players rated by hours from the previous two patch cycles. All right, so that's the key right there is top active players rated by hours, which is, I think, where CIG makes the mistake. Um, probably because they don't have tracking on the issue council or something. I don't know. But the top, top active by hours does not mean that they're testing. Right? It doesn't mean that they're doing anything of value. So now what you're probably going to get they should have just said top, top active. You're, you're probably going to get uh, a bunch of people that are AFKing in the patches to get to these hours. Content creators, let's be honest. What's, what, why do we hate content creators today? Tell, tell me why we're, we're the, the scum of the earth and, and why we're, we're you know the worst thing ever. Please. Following that is Wave 2 with another group of active... Wave 2, another group of active players, 15K. Players in addition to the Praetorian level of concierge members who've paid over 15,000 US dollars, then it'll be Wave 3, people who have paid at least 2,500 US dollars and another larger group of active players. And then finally, the base concierge level members who've only paid 1,000 US dollars back in the game will be able to access the P2, as well as another larger group of trustworthy testers and then, of course, the last wave will go. be open PTU wave. Okay. Um, don't important for CIG money. D does is co are content creators automatically in wave one? I don't know. I'm Evo. I'm subbed, and I was concierge, so I ha ticked all the boxes to be in wave one anyway. Uh, like they content creators play the game more than most people, so I imagine they would be in wave one, right? So. Is that a thing? I, I have no idea. Um, you guys can tell me, but I have no clue on that side of things. Uh, I've never seen anything that says, if you don't have access, we'll give it to you. But if they've said that, I wouldn't notice it anyway because I already had access. So it would probably go over my head. Right? Five, where anybody with a game package will also what defines a creator is a streamer with one viewer a creator or is it like they're dedicated cre creators that get these things I, I have no idea dude we'll be able to test the game and just starting off looking at the post you can see the like to dislike ratio is pretty extreme in the favor of dislike and there are a lot and i mean a lot of negative threads and replies all over the forums, but there are a couple common threads. One of them comes from the concierge community who feel particularly aggrieved. Oh, here we go. Such as here, Thorringer feels that he spent over $5,000 on the game, and if you count his son a little bit more, and he feels that he shouldn't have been bumped out. How do you know you've been bumped out of wave one? And why are you playing wave one in the first place? Right? ...of wave one. And there are quite a few more posts like this. Like I said, there's a common thread here. And if you think the main announcement post reactions are bad, you should look at the concierge forums if you have access to it. One of the most upvoted comments in there is, amazing, they're taking away concierge perks and don't even have the decency to tell us. 
made by Watcher XP. And, and a lot of the you. reactions <laughs> share the same sentiment, adding in that they think it's ridiculous that somebody can spend $10 a month and get access, whereas they have to wait till wave three if they've spent $2,500 or... And, and that is ridiculous. And the reason is, is because they don't want to lose subs. They don't want to lose money, but they already got the concierge money. It's really messed up. That is the part where... Um, it's totally justified is that's where you screw everything up as you go. Oh, but well, you know, the active people paying, well, yeah, we'll take the $10, but the people we already had your money and not only spent it, but most likely wasted it on, um, you know, stupid shit over the years. Yeah. You don't matter way for if they spent a thousand. Others feel like this is a push to get more people to subscribe, a horrible marketing ploy. See yeah. what Sir Kep here says about it. <laughs> he what a fucking shit. More and more aggressive sales techniques went from wave one to wave four. How do you know what wave you're in? You know you don't play the game. That like that's a th that the entitlement here, dude, is they know they don't play. They know they don't play. Like, that's the thing, is none of them play, they're posting on Spectrum, losing their mind, and they don't play the game. Are they just basing it off the money? Maybe. Because nobody plays. That's got to be what it is. Uh, main problem is that with the new system is you can't test it with org mates at the same time because you have too many uh, levels of concierge. But it's not levels of concierge. It's not exclusively levels of concierge. It's how much you play. That's my focus, is the people who deserve to be in the test environments are the people who test. But if we go back to something we were talking about earlier, during tests... They should just close the P PU. And then you can get all the testing you need. But this is some pretty choice don't. language. And of course, there are very few positive comments responding to this, having some constructive feedback on how they might better do this way. Uh, this is from Tarada. It's understandable to want people to be active on PTU servers, but you've taken the problem backwards. You need to give players a reward based on their activity to motivate people to go and test the PTU on a regular basis and not just the top three, especially since you seem to have access to numbers of hours of played per player. Yeah, like we should be rewarding testers, which they do in EVO. I, I'm sure you've seen the post before. Is like, uh, I think Cutlet or or um, even Void Dude got the most like maze sold or some shit like that. So he got a ship because of it, right? Process to get the results that they're looking for. So they do. Which leads me to why they decided to do this. Chris explained that they've kept the current wave system for the past four years, but it's actually started to have some issues. There are a lot of people apparently who are now in these early testing phases, which has led yeah, to a really well. high spike in players starting off, but then a sharp drop off as the PTU lasts longer. The post Not even a sharp drop off. Okay, so he's he is taking this post. This was in also there. soon followed. So I don't know if he's going to keep it on camera or not. If he doesn't, I'm going to read it to you because this is pretty important up by Will Leverett from CIG who went on to explain that actually 95% of the player base who check out the PTU just go on once and then never yeah. come on again leaving them that's all you need to know is that 95% of the player base goes on and just checks out the new ship some of the new gameplay realize that it's super buggy leave and wait for live they are not there to test with a huge spike on the first day and a massive drop off following what that. What time is ATC? This, after is they this go video. on to explain is not an ideal scenario. What they want to see so is a gradual the, uh, building queue. up of players who test it throughout the test cycle so that they can properly load the patches and test new ones as they arrive before eventually releasing to live. Now, all of this seems pretty reasonable, but in classic CIG fashion, they released this information quietly in the forums yes with no. little follow-up details, leaving a lot of people with questions and anger. If they had given some more context to this change along with maybe some visual aids, 
in a video format, maybe, I think that more people would understand why they're doing it and there'd be less anger. And so yeah. let me try to do their jobs for them. And please don't take this as a defense of the way they're doing things. I'm just trying to explain it how I understand. So here's a graph that represents the current P2 patch cycle system. They start off with QA and then Evocati, which are very small groups of players who are only testing to make sure the patch isn't completely broken. And then it moves on to wave one, where you get this massive spike because of all the people in wave one, and it drops. And it costs money. This costs money because this isn't just a spike of playing and server costs. This is a spike of sending out the downloads to thousands of players. Off sharply, maybe comes back up again. This is not like official data. This is him just visualizing what he thinks is happening to make it easier for you guys. If there's a new ship that's released in that PTU, and then you get wave two, and then eventually wave three, which again has another massive spike and then it flatlines afterward. Like they said, this isn't what they want. What they instead want to try to get is something more like this second graph I made with their new PTU release schedule. The idea being that they're always adding more people to the PTU and yeah. loading it over a longer period of time to get better feedback for their patch releases. Comparing these two together, you can see now that there's a higher baseline with this new release, but this is speculative. It's yes. not actual data. I'm just trying to show what they're trying to do. The important context that they probably should- We don't know if the yellow line is going to be the result of these changes or not. ...that have given here along with this is the issues with 3.18 and 3.19, but sadly, they've not even released a post-mortem yet to discuss these problems, and I think that's part of the whole issue. Just yeah, in case you don't know, 318 was in PTU for something like six months. And towards the end of that cycle, people were sick of it and weren't playing it anymore. And so even though they were trying to stress test a big feature that needed a lot. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is with 318, the only thing that was motivating me to want to play live after that long PTU cycle was the wipe. And I, I certainly got wiped. I got wiped out of even being able to play of people to try it they weren't getting the numbers that they needed so when it released to live it was predictably a pretty big disaster the faking the average line the red line stays below the average to make it look worse i see the point is trying to prove what they're going for and what they're saying is happening like oh my god the idea that morph is is somehow shilling based on the graph that he wrote is like just just stop and think for a second guys Oh my God, the hatred towards people for no reason is so insane to me. He is just showing a graph for what they are saying is happening and what they think is going to happen based off of the results. But again, none of us can know. And he literally said that. Like, what the hell, dude? Leading to massive desync and some people not even being able to play the game for a couple weeks. Then 319 had a similar problem with a long PTU patch cycle and more issues with the release. And again, all of this is centering around the fact that the new tech that they're using right now, PES, which is building up to server meshing, needs people stress testing it before it goes to live and stress testing it after every single patch because every patch tries to resolve problems that they found in the earlier patches. And if mm -hmm. no one's testing it, they can't make sure that the fix is actually a fix. Not being able to test this way has led to us continually having this massive player desync that we've been experiencing up to the point where some players are just invisible and going around killing people invisible. It makes try Yeah, but then the thing is, is the devs aren't even using the PTU servers or the waves or the forums or all these things that you're getting access to to even fix it. They're going on random people's discords, right? So it's like, these things aren't working anyway. Devs are like playing in discords by themselves with, you know, a few people and, and, and gathering data that way rather than using the tools that are being addressed here. So what's the difference anyway? You might as well just open it to everyone, lose all the money and, and not get any data because it's not getting used is what it seems like trying to play impossible with friends and certainly impossible in any kind of competitive events like Jumptown. 
So with this graph and with this context, I personally understand why they're trying to do this and I support them trying to make a change to get that effect. Same. I think the problem is again, communication Always. and the fact that people have just gotten used to getting early access. A lot of people look at the PTU as a way to see their shiny new ship that they spent a lot of money on early before anybody else can. And that and how about this? You know, want to talk about content creators? I've been saying this for years. Content creators who are leaking Evocati, who are doing all these things. And this is why I care a lot less about the Evocati NDA, because CIG doesn't enforce it in the most simple and easy way to enforce it. Is if content creators are out there leaking the NDA stuff and, and literally using that to make money off of it, uh, but not getting any you know, kickback or, or, or uh, negative thing happening to them. I kept saying it, that if you have creators that are doing that in your space, you should just revoke their wave one access. Right? They're not in Evocati. So any content creator that is leaking Evocati notes, things, anything like that, are not in Evocati because they are not beholden to any NDA. Where myself... I am beholden to an NDA, so I really don't leak anything. But in reality, if you guys leak something in the Twitch chat, I don't give a shit anymore because I used to delete those comments. Mods were knocking people down left and right during Evocati phases. And the only reason people were telling, hey, Mike, did you see this cool thing? Do you know what's coming in the next patch? Do you hear like the way my voice changed? It was all just people genuinely being excited about Star Citizen, right? And then CIG doesn't enforce their NDA on creators who are leaking it, on player players who are leaking it, or any, like, not taking down Spectrum posts, not taking down, um, uh, not, not Spectrum posts, not taking down Reddit posts, things like that, where they could easily do those things. If they don't care, why should I? Right. So I'm not going out here sharing videos of, uh, you know, new changes or anything in, in Evo, but I'm not going to sit here and uh, pre prevent people from getting excited about the game. Right. That's it. But I do think creators should be removed from wave one. And here's why is because wave one is where all the Star Citizen creators make all of their money. Live brings no boost in views, but wave one does. Right. So that's the thing about creators and end wave one is, you know, on my streams, you're not going to see me testing very much unless a dev comes in and asks me to, which uh, we've all seen Luke Presley, Elliot and others ask me to look at specific things. And whatever I'm doing, we stop what we're doing and we we test those things. I will always do that, especially in wave one. Right. But the you know, it's always for the for the the game. Right. Um, I wonder if, if streamers that are non-subs know Legatus will get wave one access. Me too, but there's probably very few of those just because you are going to pay the $10 a month at the minimum to make sure you have the content, right? So I always try to stop and do things for the game, but even myself, when I'm in wave one, I've already done the Evocati cycle, which I haven't been the best tester in, in the last year, but... I will say I have been in the last week, let's say, just because I've, I have been around uh, and able to, to test. But when I'm in wave one, I'm making content too, right? I'm not just testing. So, or it would probably be 90% making content, whatever, playing the game and testing that way. And yes, contributing to... I, you know what? I should say, like, Wave 1, I have been very good lately, uh, contributing to to uh, the IC reports and things like that over the last uh, six months or so, I would say. But in general, I would say it's like 90-10, right? Especially when on stream, it's like 100, zero. And then off stream, maybe we go and do the, the issue council reports and stuff. But yeah, man, it's uh, it's tough. So that's that's uh, we need people testing. We don't need more entitled Star Citizen backers. I don't care about your stupid entitlement because you spent money like an idiot on this game. I am also an idiot, so I am in the same boat. I am concierge. I am just outside the highest level of concierge. But we have all done stupid things. And the thing about it is, is that nothing about your initial pledge should tell you 
and and no time did you buy a spaceship were you buying a spaceship to get access to wave one you were buying it to have early access to a ship you were buying it to have early access to a ship when the game launches now you're getting access to to avoid wipes and things like that you already have your perks you don't deserve any more right if this game ever launches you are endlessly perked up okay you're on percocet you have so many perks so there's there's no you don't deserve anything else shut up okay the subscriber thing is a joke and if you're mad about that you are justified all right you are justified because ten dollars a month now new money is worth way less than what you've provided to them to keep the doors open okay that i agree with but the 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 i deserve all these things you don't deserve anything unless you're providing feedback is what they're saying and i think that's pretty based and based cig and Fuck them. Like, that's where I'm at with it. That's not really the point of the test environment. It's exactly. literally an environment for testing, and that's how it needs to work. So there. And now that should mean that the PU is for gaming and that the PU should be treated like a live service and something good and not left to rot and die like they always do it. If you're now, that's my thing. If you're going to do this, if you're going to do this, my main thing is you better treat the P the PU, not the PTU, like a live service now. You better fucking treat it like a real game now instead of the what instead of what you've been doing. Their focus on not trying to cater to people who've spent a lot of money and more towards making it a proper test environment makes a lot of sense if you want the game to fix problems, which I personally do. If you think about it, it's inevitable that people are going to be angry about losing access because it necessitates them limiting who can get into the game early so that they want to play the game later. That's how they bring that curve up and make sure more people are playing towards the end of the cycle so that they can get a proper test environment done and fix the issues at hand. Exactly. There are only a couple of problems the way I see it that they've not really addressed. The first one is that if they're going to still allow subscribers in wave one, it seems to me that they're still going to have a huge spike, especially because a lot of people in concierge have disposable income and will probably pay for that subscription. I mean, maybe it's just a marketing ploy, but it seems to be maybe a little bit counter to what they're trying to achieve, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe those subscribers will still have a huge drop off and it will still fix the curve. Maybe. Uh, pissing off the whales is scary though. Who's going to fund the game? Definitely not me. The dummies that they're looking for now, which is going over to Asia, people who've never played the game before, uh, trying to get new backers. Because guess what? When you're a new backer and you buy a, a I don't know, like a, a, a Alpha, Mustang Alpha, right? You're, you're just going to be like, ooh, well, look at that. Look at this Corsair here. Look at this thing. And then you go ahead and you buy more ships. So they get more dummies to become more court concierge backers and then more entitled people. And then they go for more and more and more. And the problem is, is they're running out of people. And you could tell that they're running out of people because they're making less money this year. The, the curve has finally done one of these. And I think they're freaking out a little bit, which is why they left that $10 sub. The other issue is that I'm not entirely convinced that this is going to fix the problem. Me Especially either. with extremely long patch testing cycles, but it's better there than needs what we to have. be, in my opinion, more incentive to keep people in the game and playing it in PTU. Because right now, there is no reward for it for the majority of people. There are a top three selected who win some ships. This is something they started to do recently, but it's just not enough. There needs to be something that everybody can earn in some way that's made no, where it, it can't be exploited too badly. Of course, no way. anything they make is going to be exploited in some way. Somebody's going to game the system. That's unavoidable, but if they're trying to get more testers, they need to set up some kind of reward system. Damn, Most people go back to the PU hot. because they want to continue progressing. They want to continue earning. They don't want to have their progress reset every single patch like what happens in the PTU cycle. Exactly. So, so, so they know getting new backers is going to get them like 
hundreds, if not thousands of dollars from a good amount of them. Hey, giving them some brownie points towards purchasing something on the website or getting some cool skins or a subscriber They'll item or something for playing X number of hours. However they want to structure it, I think would do a lot more than this wave thing that they're planning on doing. Though maybe the I agree, but we can't you'll never see them uh do things that don't benefit them financially. So rarely do you see those things, especially now. They're doing so many more things that are trying to make up for their losses with 318 wave thing needs to be done as well in addition to providing some rewards but i want to know what you guys think down below where are you right now does this help quell your frustration with my explanation or are you still frustrated with cig's changes if so let me know and if you think there should be a reward system like me how would you structure rewards how would you do it so it can't be too badly exploited and would it actually encourage you to play the PTU? Yeah, career kits. I've been Morphologist. If you like this video, you know what to do. See you in the next one. I mean, here's the deal, dude. I think uh, this, sh this should do exactly what they need is less incentive to play the PTU and then you see who your actual testers are and then they can... I think what what's going to happen is the wave structures are going to be very fluid for right now like they were saying that oh we might do multiple waves in one day because they're going to do a wave one they're not going to get anybody and then they're going to be like oh well we should go to wave two then uh maybe we'll get a few more people and i don't know i just feel like everything's super fluid everything's going to change and this isn't necessarily going to work but my i my stance remains the way it was from the beginning when I read this is holy crap, that's insane to put the $25,000 number right there front and center. I can't believe they're keeping the subscribers and we all know why. But this wildly improves from the initial wave one situation because that was pay to pay to play, pay to test. That was the grimiest shit, and we've had it for years. So for me, I want to let them cook. I want to see what happens in the PTU, but I here's the deal. If you don't action feedback, if you don't do, you know, if you're not, if you're not actioning feedback, that's the main thing. If you're not actioning feedback, then what's the point of all this? What is the point of all this? It can't possibly be to make more money in this scenario. I think it's to not lose money, but this isn't to me like a marketing tactic to make more money. There's no way because they have to have known that this is just going to blow up in their face. But the, the, the real issue for me is you have to treat the testing environment like a testing environment, action it quickly, and swiftly, and then have the PU be a solid, good experience. And I don't believe they will. And I I believe this is going to blow up in their face because they've never done anything right. We all know that there's better ways to do this, but they had the worst possible way previously. This is just slightly less bad.